Well, here goes, listeners. What a pleasure it is to have with us, joining us here in the studio, who responded to a WhatsApp that's, uh, well, very, um, let me just say, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a long shot when I texted Will Pekofsky and I said, straight yeah. out of the bubble, would you like to come over to the studio yeah. and have a chat with the great cricketer? I was just expecting two blue bombers. Mm. He's played a test match now. Who the fuck are these blokes? Yeah. You know, a couple of years ago, yeah. I'm on their yeah. Insta- I'm on his Instagram, yeah. and I was like, "Who the fuck are these?" Yeah. But no, it's a lovely, thoughtful, mature boy. Well, boy, rude. Um, now a man, and he's joined us in TJC Towers. Will Bukowski, our golden boy. Welcome to the Great Cricketer. Thanks for having me, guys. Mm. That was a very polite answer. Um, mm. Now, in these WhatsApp, in this WhatsApp <laughs> exchange, you actually replied by saying, "Love to do it, Pez. Um, what should I wear?" Yeah. And you're the only interviewee we've ever had who's <laughs> asked what they should wear to a show. And, uh, and and you also went on to say, like, I've got one of 14 Ralph Lauren shirts <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that I could wear. So are, are you a, a fashionista? I would just say uh, perception is everything, as we know through cricket. Um, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you are. It's how you look. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I was, <laughs> it was just a really dumb moment for me, to be honest. I just... I had this idea because I'd seen you blokes had actually flourished a little bit and had got yourself a TV show. So the first thought that came to my mind was was that TV show. So yeah. uh, sorry, are you disappointed to have learnt yeah. you know, just on the podcast? Yeah, no, you're just instead I'm in podcast, yeah, yeah, I'm in some yeah some podcast. So <laughs> everyone's got a podcast these days. So I don't see why this is that special. But um, now, do you feel we've actually sissed up a little bit? Like I should have been clearer. Yeah, well, yeah. I might have just given you the two blue bombs as you yeah. suggested before. If I knew yeah. it was just this, but yeah. now Pez did yeah, say, I'll find myself here. Pez did ask you to bring your baggy grain to wear it. Um, yeah, I presume you have brought it. Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, it's yeah. just in the car. <laughs> 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 if it wasn't raining, I would have gone. I would have brought it, but I didn't want it to get wet. Do you like when inter- uh, internet blokes want to like devalue a great achievement, you know, by just trivialising your baggy grain on a pod- on some podcast? Oh, well, that's the point of it, isn't it? Mm, it yeah, good be, point. It wouldn't be fun if everyone, mm. you know. Mm was all respectful and all that stuff. Yeah, so. true. Now, you would know, Will, obviously, as an enormous fan of the show. Um, that we've been saying <laughs> Enormous for is a bit strong. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, we, we've been saying for a while that you are prodigal runs, that is, the runs of uh, a prodigy or, prodig- or prodigious talent. Now, we've had blokes with mothers that are linguistic experts, apparently, saying these blokes don't know what prodigal means and they're dumb. Mm. Um, can you just lean into the microphone and say, I am Will Pekofsky <laughs> and I am prodigal runs? I am Will Pekofsky and I am prodigal runs. <laughs> That's it. That's the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about like you've you've debuted for Australia now in the Test Arena, and like that things change for you when that happens. You've already you know tried to impress us by saying how many people knew you at Hotel Sorrento. <laughs> yeah, well, off mate. air. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. Like you know, for for this kind of interview, interview, like, are you relying on media training a little bit? Like, are you thinking, oh, what are they going to ask me here? What you know, um, I've been taught to sort of you know pivot answers this way and that is, is is that kind of how it works for you now that you're in a uh, big time media uh you do get trained that way i was actually i was saying to you guys before that i was trying to explain to my missus well firstly why i was doing this instead of hanging out with her on a friday morning and couldn't come up with a good answer but um also like what the concept of the show was and stuff like that so i basically said to her the idea is that you guys try and make me sound like the biggest asshole that i can <laughs> um <laughs> So <laughs> that's where yeah, media training goes out the window because yeah. you're meant to take them down a line of some crap like mm. uh, cliche that's been going on for a hundred years. Mm. Yeah. Um, that you guys make that quite tough at times. Mm. So I'll give it my best shot if mm. you want me to. But so there's just there's you can give us two answers. Like give us like what you meant to say and then what you think. <laughs> <laughs> there's just a club cricket in all of us, though, isn't there? Like you've just come out of the bubble, obviously from playing Test match cricket for Australia. You know, your girlfriends are like, can we just spend this lovely rainy Melbourne Friday morning? No, I'm going to go on the Grey Cricketer podcast. Mm. So you just you just can't escape it. Yeah, I'll just – yeah, you can't, can you? I no. wish I could. But yeah. Um, it is amazing that I was at training this morning, and I'm not even saying this to take the piss, but how many blokes just, like, wish this was Saturday? Like, it is pissing down outside. Yeah, For yeah. anyone who doesn't know, like, there's 35 mils of rain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, scheduled, I guess, scheduled yeah. the right word. Yeah. Predicted yeah. for today. Mm. And uh, – yeah, it's amazing how it doesn't matter what level you play at. They all wish it was on the day that cricket was meant yeah. to be on. Yeah, like mm. the best thing about cricket is when it's not playing. Yeah, like mm. when it's exactly, off. yeah. 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 All the you're, you're actually always a better cricketer for not playing. <laughs> mm. That's where my shoulder injury is coming in handy. Right? <laughs> I'll just like, think so I'm better than I am. Would you prefer to have the shoulder injury right now than play for Melbourne District Cricket Club tomorrow? 
<laughs> this will come out afterwards. No. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then what's the real answer? No. Uh, well, it's funny. So, like, okay. So speaking about how grade cricket, pl- you know, parlays into playing for Australia, can you take us into the Australian sheds? You know, like, is it is it a different environment to what you experience in? grade cricket or is it just like everyone's got better kit and there's more coaches i'd say it's the exact same it's just yeah probably just like upgraded a little bit so you've still got your alpha dog so you've got Mm. steve smith he's got the best bats everyone wants to copy him he's the best player yeah and then you sort of work so he's allowed to do whatever he wants right and then it sort of filters down from there and like the younger and less experienced you are the less you're allowed to do the less you're allowed to get away with you have the worst kit, you have the worst everything. Uh, so it does actually filter through. It's just probably, yeah, maybe ranked up a level or two. Which I actually found surprising, to be honest. Really? I thought it would be a bit more of an even playing field in that regard. But it's like, nah, have, well, well, Steve Smith's the best. He's got the most bats. Mm. And sort of. So how does that manifest? Like it would, it would be something that you'd want to do as part of your preparation or something or say something and then you'd think twice because you're like, oh, I've got this intangible pyramid in my head yeah. of where I sit. And so if I say that, this will happen. You're still making those calculations? A hundred percent. So it's like, it's also oh, hard because that's a shame. <laughs> for the great cricketers, obviously, it's sort of similar. Like you play for Victoria, you start off down the bottom and you get sort of higher and higher up. And I still feel like I'm probably in that middle rung at the moment. Like really? I'm still pretty young and inexperienced in Victoria. Uh. Then you jump the level and then you're right down the bottom again. So it's sort of just trying to navigate your way through. But if my shoulder were were right and I was lucky enough to play grade cricket tomorrow. Um, it would have been great going back to Melbourne knowing that I was probably closer to the top of the tree. Yeah. Now, there's just – because we were learning the other day, weren't we, back? was it a Sigma? Sigma male? Yeah, so, so, so it's like the Alpha. So, yeah, so Alpha is the top and then Beta is the bottom or Omega is the bottom Omega's or something. Omega is the bottom. But then Sigma apparently is outside of the conventional structures of Alphadom. You obviously know what I'm talking about when I say that. Yes. It goes without saying. But I reckon like Marnus is sort of outside this prism that you're, sp- you're speaking about because he's relatively new into the side. I mean, he's got five test hundreds now. Don't mm. get me wrong. Wonderful mm. player. But I also noticed yesterday on Instagram, Dave Warner's referring to him as Hogpile on his Instagram. <laughs> so is that what the players are calling him? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, whatever that word was, Sigma or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that describes him pretty well. Just outside the sphere. Yeah. Even yeah. when he's made 40 test hundreds, I think it might still be the same as well. <laughs> It's hard to you have to probably have had alpha status somewhere in your life yeah. mm. going going up. Yeah. And I feel like he's just never he's, never he's just that. a lovely person. Yeah. And he's just never decided that being an alpha is for him. Sure. Put it that way. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for me this. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to be the alpha male. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny saying like you've got to have been an alpha somewhere in your life. Like researching this chat with you i just noticed how many like there's so many interviews with you or stories about you ahead of your debut where you know the journal will do a recap of your cricketing life to date lots of pictures of you as a kid and it's whether it's on tv or, it? well yeah and i'm not going to go into hampton and brighton i get it you're a fucking worldie but like um <laughs> but like <laughs> kids scored we're runs you know yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've probably scored yeah. runs um kid, kid does good yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> ponning nets yeah hit him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like there's lots of quotes about your maturity, you know, and your ability to mix it with older kids. Like, cause you're often in, you know, you're often in teams at a very young age. You're playing like senior cricket when you're like 10 or 11 scoring fifties. Like, so are you just used to going into every single team as the prodigy, you know? And so when you go into the Aussie team, are you sort of just sitting there going, listen, I'm just going to bide my time here because every team I go into, I'm just the guy who will make it. Uh, that's, that's a really tough one to answer. I feel like I, I can only answer this and sound like an asshole. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was one of the, yeah. I think growing up, you sort mm. of get used to it. Yeah, I think the maturity thing is just a front more than anything. You just say one thing, but my mates would suggest otherwise. So it goes back to that. What would your mates say? That everything. Well, not would. What would they say? They do say that everything they see in the media is the complete opposite <laughs> to who I actually am. So, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm living my best life. But it's. I mean, your mates would be right in it. It'd be a backhanded compliment because, like, when we, you know, we trawl through your Instagram and every Instagram before every interview, and the thing that stands out to me is like when you look at a lot of other cricketers, uh, it's very curated 
is like pictures with particular people. It's often, you know, the um, icons of the sporting world trying to develop a kind of brand. You look at your one, everyone looks quite good, don't get me wrong, but like it's your mates, you know, it's your yeah. mates, it's your family and like you've got comments underneath. It's all, it all seems very authentic and real. So it's obviously important to you to, you know, not be someone who just like eats cricket balls and lives and breathes cricket. Like you literally have a life outside the game, right? Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, you can get immersed in it a bit. So it's mm. important that you keep, a lot of people say genuinely that like people change when they move up the levels. Happens at, well, it happens everywhere. It happens at grade level. You go, oh, I still yeah. remember. I went up to twos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I I yeah. remember Alistair McCook. So he'll, he won't, I hope he won't mind me saying this, but I remember, so he had this aura about him when I first went down to Melbourne as a 14 year old. And I was like, this bloke has got to average 45 in the first. Like, <laughs> he's just got this presence. Yeah. Like, he had the rig. He had everything. <laughs> like, he sort of strutted around training. <laughs> I was shocked to find out he was the fourth 11 captain. <laughs> 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 batted six and occasionally bowled. <laughs> and I genuinely couldn't believe it. But I was like, yeah. oh, well, at least he's living the best version of himself. He yeah. wants to be, yeah, have mm. this aura. And he got me as a 14-year-old. And I mm. thought, yeah, that's someone I want to latch on to. And then... Yeah. After I checked his stats, not so much. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I think, yeah, a lot of people do maybe go down that sort of curated line. But I sort of, yeah, it's not really me, I wouldn't think. Because it's interesting because Pez has obviously gone through Instagram and I did the same thing. And, and you rightly say, Pez, that, you know, there's wonderful images there of your two dogs, Hugo and Harley. Is that yeah, right? Hugo, Hugo and Harley, you know, friends and stuff. But your most recent photo is obviously you, you've obviously Googled yourself on your debut because you've got a photo <laughs> of yourself and it's just got the, it's got the Getty Images watermark on it. So, <laughs> yeah. so talk us through that process. Uh, talk us through about go- Googling yourself. Oh, well, yeah, it's got 60, so I thought... <laughs> 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 Mainly positive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Job done. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, I pretty much made it. I actually, so I'm like a big, I, I like delete. So I'm actually, I'm basically off Twitter. Like I'll barely ever read that. that sounds um, intelligent. Yes. Um. So, but I needed to get my fix of great quick cricketer stuff. So I have to keep Instagram. Mm. And yeah. I was shocked to find out that my followers had doubled on day one of my debut. So I was like, oh, well, I've got to make the most of this. So <laughs> I just went, thought I'd put a photo up and get a few more likes than yeah. I was used to. So I was yeah. sort of, that's, that's, Sort of big dick energies as well. If you yeah. get a lot of likes and stuff, can we um, and followers, can so. we skip straight to the debut if that's if that's all right? Like when when Pez and I, I think we were watching it together, weren't we? We were in my mind, in my mind anyway. And it's just like the the calm that you exuded in that first ball. It's just like you're playing a school game. Like you, you, your head must have been racing. You're facing Boomer. Warner's obviously said, "No, mate, you take first ball." Or <laughs> yeah, kind of him. And and Boomer's bowling from fucking cover, doing these ones with the <laughs> wanger arm. Like what's going through your head when Boomer's running and you test a boo? Uh, I actually genuinely felt like I was playing a PlayStation game. Like, cause yeah. I had, yeah. it was yeah. like, oh, it was yeah. like international cricket 2011 or something on PlayStation. I don't know if, what are you talking about? No, I'm trying to explain what it was like. And I like PlayStation. This, <laughs> was it mate? They had this view. So like, I, I still oh, yeah. remember faking yeah, 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 illness yeah. to get a day off school when the game came out. <laughs> yeah. So I like, and I loved Shane Watson at the time. So yeah, it was whenever Shane course. Watson was opening the batting and it was, it might've been Ashes cricket. It was one of the games. Yeah. And they had this new view and I thought it was pretty cool where like you were like kind of a bit of a spider cam over the batter. Yeah. So like you'd be almost facing. Yeah. And like, I'd never played a proper game at the SCG before. So no, I didn't right, know what yeah. it was like, yeah. but I had played a PlayStation game there <laughs> getting Shane Watson a hundred on Ashes Cricket, whatever year it was, when yeah. I skipped the day of school, because yeah. I remember it. Yeah. I remember it vividly because mum and dad had a rule that if I was sick and couldn't go to school, I couldn't play on the PlayStation. Yeah. So I had like the thing, and unfortunately they were working really closely at the time, so they could come home and check on me during the day. So I remember Watson being on like 80 odd, I reckon, <laughs> had to quickly save, like unplug the PlayStation and pretend I was doing something else. <laughs> So I still remember it. And I was like, I genuinely remember sitting there. Boomer was at the top of his mark. And I'm like, yeah. I know this because yeah. this is what happened. R2X. Yeah, yeah. This is what happened when I was facing <laughs> England with Shane Watson. Yeah. And I think it was, um, what was the guy? Graham Onions bowled a lot to me that Graham day. Graham Onions. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barb it, Barb it straight to you that day. Yeah. 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 What yeah, a really punished him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to think. I forgot who else was bowling. Stephen <laughs> Finn, Steve maybe. Yeah. Finney, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so that's what it genuinely felt genuinely like. Genuinely felt like that. Yeah, yeah, that was what my first over felt like. Well, that's why it looked like it was so calm because you were just yeah. playing PlayStation. Yeah, that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, so that was yeah, well, yeah, that was actually it. I'm yeah. not even. Yeah, yeah that's All fair right. enough. In terms, of, yeah, like 
mountains of sports psychology and stuff, and it's just PlayStation. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, – there, there was a story when Cameron Green kicked off his debut um, in the ODIs, and it was a KL Rahul was like, go well, young fella. And Cameron Green's probably just like, what? What's this, what's what, what sort of sledging is this? Yeah. I don't understand. Why it's it's nice what sorcery? Yeah, what, yeah. What's this? Yeah, <laughs> uh, what is this sorcery? <laughs> was it was it the same for you? Like, how were you uh, welcomed by the Indians? Could, w- was there any chat, uh, any any reminders or anything like that? Was it all very polite? Not that I heard yeah. or cared for really. Um, yeah, no, they mm. don't. They're actually quite nice to be honest, mm. and like. I don't. I I can't take sledging seriously. Like if they sledge me, it would have been like cool guys, like cheers, yeah. like good on yeah. you, sort of thing. So I, yeah, it didn't really phase me. If anything, mm. I would have. Yeah, I kind of like it because if someone sledges you, like I got sledged a bit in the Shield games before Christmas. So right. I won't mention names, but no. like, what are the nature of the sledges? Who the fuck sledging you when you're on three hundred and eighty or whatever? Like? Well, this was the thing. One of the sledges came from. This would make it pretty easy to work out. But it was the <laughs> second game, and it was an opening bowl up. Western Australia had sent us in. We were one for 230. I was on 130. Mm. And he started sledging me about, like, I sort of got lucky on a couple of shots. He started saying, oh, this is like a club game. And I was like, what, mate? Like, <laughs> you sent us in and it's one for 230. Like, mm. what are you doing? Mm. Um, one brings two. And mm. then uh, I actually got, you know how, like, people, so I explained that to someone going off the ground and you know when someone like says what your reply should have been, I'm like that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, you should have just turned around to him and said, "Bloody oath, mate! Like you're playing like a yeah, 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 club yeah, game." And yeah, like yeah. at the time, I was like, "Oh my god, that would have been yeah. so perfect." Yeah. But I didn't have that in me. I don't but. think anyone's actually ever that quick to reply. We had someone write into yeah. a, a, a Patreon show yesterday yeah. about hashtag us to see Fridays, and uh, he was he, he said that he gave this like perfect, you know perfect diction answer eloquently presented in repost. And it's like, there's no way that happens. If someone yeah. saws you a cunt on the field, mm. you're just like, your head's scrambled. You're like, ah, mm. Mm. Yeah. You don't, never apply like with this perfect zinger. You yeah, know? exactly. So. I wish, yeah. It's almost like you need to be prepared for it. Like it needs to be, there needs to be a few overs, I reckon, of it. Mm. So you know, <laughs> yeah. you're like, in your mind, you're already ticking over like, what could he say next? This is what I'm going to yeah. say if he says something yeah. Yeah. like this sort of thing. <laughs> but if it's like a spontaneous <laughs> Playing in a shield game yeah. at 130. <laughs> if he says this, I'm going to say this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if it's like only a one-off thing, you sort of sit there and you're like, oh, it's pretty hard to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you've already won that battle. Mm. I don't think so. I could have come back with something. <laughs> he like won nothing. it. Yeah. He got you. Yeah. 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 I should have come back. Yeah. I should have. I just have this belief. Like I got, and I hate dad for teaching me this, but yeah. he's like, as a batsman, you can't win if you sledge back. Yeah. But I feel like if you're 130 not out after making 250 the game before, you can win. Like yeah. Even if you get the next ball, you've still won. Yeah. So I'm like, he should have maybe made that a bit more clear, saying like, if you have made a significant amount of runs yeah. previous to that, yeah. you can say whatever you want. He should have made that it. more clear, you're right. Yeah. 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 So that's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick one on, because um, we didn't want to you know, focus on your head for this interview, because I feel like... You've said a lot. You've given people a lot, you know, around what's happened with what's happening with your head and what you've gone through. Um, and if people want to hear what you think or what others think, there's so much out there, you know. So you don't need another interview on that. All I want to know is like, I just just my observation that like, fuck, twenty six million people have views on your head, you know. At like, what does that feel like? Just with so many people thinking that they can. Um, I oh, know everyone's allowed to express what they want to express, but like just carrying that idea that so many people have views on a, a, a quite a highly complex thing. Yeah, there's a lot of experts out there. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say I did well in the test because because I've grown this beautiful mullet. The attention's <laughs> gone from what's inside my head to outside my head. So, yeah. yeah, that's sort of a bit of method behind that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I don't know. Yeah. It's a. It is bizarre because everyone seems to have a view and like, oh, he can never play again. He's yeah. been hit this amount of times. It's like, yeah. oh, you were brain surgeon, are you, mate? Like, yeah, good work. Like, <laughs> um, good work. Mm. Yeah, that's just Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Legit, that's why I got rid of it. But yeah. um, I think people, yeah, they. I would say they're entitled to their opinions, but I actually don't agree with that because yeah. I'm like, mm. I don't sit there or. Not me and no one. This is the thing about professional sport. I can yeah. people think because they pay money to go and watch yeah. or they watch on the TV, they have the right to just abuse you. Yeah. But I don't pay $5 to go abuse you for not doing mm. your job properly or something like that. Yeah. Mm. 
And yeah, it's an interesting one because I was I was saying to you blokes before I actually had the privilege of watching the first two tests with my mates and like listening to how judgmental they are about people like and I just sit there and I go like I actually spray them when it's not about me at all yeah. just saying like oh if it's that easy facing blokes at 140 kilometers an hour swinging it both ways then yeah. go on it's all <laughs> yeah, yours yeah, like yeah, have yeah, a crack yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah it's very easy to yeah to judge but no one yeah. really knows what's going on I don't think and as long as you it's getting a bit serious for my liking but okay yeah, as yeah. long as um, <laughs> as long as people. Like as long as you, the people around you, I guess that you care about, mm. understand and know what's going on, then I think that's all that matters. It's a lot easier said than done. But mm. That's yeah. probably the main thing. And like other outside noise is pretty much irrelevant. Mm. That's very wise for a man beyond his years. I I had a I had a um I had a message from a guy. I think the ball was still in the air when when Warner nicked off at the Gabba. Hadn't ever been caught yet. Blake was on the WhatsApp. Pff, Warner's nicked off again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, how many hundreds does this guy need? <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I mean, you sort of answered the question there, but Pete, we spoke to Peter Hanscom last week who said that he doesn't read any press anymore and, and you just sort of spoke about social media. I just wonder how you deal with that, you know, in your future inevitable successes because, like, basically anytime we do a good podcast, I'm online look, reading the reviews. Don't worry about that. <laughs> any, any YouTube comment, you know? Like, it's probably, it might be easier to wipe out the negative criticism because you're just like, if, if I've done something, you know, if I've performed that well, don't even want to look at it. But if you score a test hundred... Might want to have a little look online, maybe, and just, just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little, a little yeah. Gander. yeah, that's a tough bit. I reckon you got to pick one or the other. You've yeah. either got to go, I'm tough enough to accept both. I'm not going to take either. Yeah. Mm. But it's sort of like, yeah. at the end of the day, the other thing is, which, so why do you need to read random people's comments? Because you get 300 text messages from people that actually yeah. do. So it's yeah. like, you get enough sort of ego boost out of that that yeah. you don't need yeah. More. Twitter and that to go. Oh, your front, like, yeah, you got some runs, but your front foot was a bit too far across. The <laughs> well, that was actually my next question. Yeah. 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 No. Just out of interest, yeah. did Pete wear a hat when he did the interview? No, he no, didn't. No, he, no, just no. for people watching the Big Bash, obviously he's got his yeah. mullet going. Yeah. yeah. And I think it might be the last mullet he ever has. Ah, uh, and that's Not that why. I want to oh, the swan that. song. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Just, yeah. I, I might have given him a big reveal there, but <laughs> I know he's like, it's looking... Like luscious at the moment out the back of the hat, but I'm not yeah. sure it's as safe and secure as. What and that may be why be. he's why he's growing it. It's a compensation. Could be, yeah, yeah, but yeah, just for the viewer that might be thinking, gee, Pete's really like going well. Yeah, in that area, mm. it's again so sort of similar Pete's to social media. It's not all that it seems. Well, yeah. you've obviously ascended to a particular position in the Victorian team where you can make that comment publicly yeah, to exactly, the captain. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. But you wouldn't do that in yeah, the Australian team. Fine leg to fine leg without a shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's our. Um, hey, what's the uh, what's your like recognition levels right after paying? After playing one test match, has it gone through the roof? You sort of walk around the street, stopped in the street now. It's honestly um, way too high considering I've only played one game. Yeah. But you've been around, haven't you? You've been around mm. squad since 2019? Mm. Yeah. When was your first squad? The Sri Lanka one? Yeah, yeah, 2019. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I think um, I've done really well at building up a ridiculous story for considering I've only just played my first game. So I feel like... <laughs> yeah. You've done really well. Yeah, man. so yeah. I just like that whole thing of when you're not playing, you're actually better than when yeah. you're playing. Mm. Yeah. So people have sort of built up this thing that, you know, I'm really good, but no one's ever actually seen me play or do anything. Oh, so the, myth, sort of, the myth of Pekofsky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of my mates actually said after my first innings, he texted me, he's like, mate, you may as well hang him up now. You're never going to be better than that right now. It doesn't matter what you do. And I'm like, mate, that's, that's a great point. So that's, that's one of your 300 texts. Yeah. 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 Hang him up now. I mate. didn't reply to 299, but that was yeah. the one I did reply to. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you want to get into, uh, if you'd hang around with us to take uh, a few Ask TGC questions as well, now to. that you're here. Well, I was going to I was gonna ask, Pez, I mean, Sri Lanka's obviously a Sri Lanka. Yep. South Africa's sort of around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the corner. You must be pretty excited to to, to face Rabada and uh, Nokia mm. uh, on those seeming green decks. That's a really exciting prospect. Yes, I am, man. Mm. I actually, funny enough, I actually am. Yeah. Mm. I actually am. Um, funny because we are talking about the media thing before. I got, yeah. a, got a text from another one of my very supportive mates saying mm. that... um. You know, like uh, Australia might bat Will at five in South Africa to protect him from. Uh, it was actually I must have been written this morning because he texted me this morning. Uh, bat at five to be protected from, you know, their their fiery attack and stuff. And I was like, are they like not allowed to bowl really well if I bat at five? <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's the most flaw. Like, what's <laughs> yeah, the point yeah. of this article? Yeah. I kept reading that and all then, the way through the India series as yeah. well. It's just like yeah. they they bowl at number five and yeah. six as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I was and like, sometimes second new ball. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I was uh, quite amazed. And then, like, even all this stuff about 
um, oh, he's going to get a short pitch barrage. I'm like, what do you think I get every time I play a game for Victoria? Like, yeah. people just bounce the bejesus out of me. But yeah. it's like almost as if there's this mythical thing where in first class cricket, they just underarm half volleys to me and then you <laughs> go to the next level and all of a sudden all these blokes are just bouncing yeah. everybody. I'm like, yeah. what? Like, why does it matter? Like, yeah. it's like, well, like, oh, yeah, he's so protected at five. It's like, nah, it's still a test match. Like, I mean, well, I did see year 200 against South Australia. There were a couple of throwdowns there. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I did score a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, are you an opener now? Is that, is that, is that the deal? Or yeah, is this you you're an opener for now? Well, I don't know. Apparently, mm. I'm getting moved down to five to be prepared. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got no yeah. idea. Mm. I think it was funny how you, you're not an opener. You open literally twice. Yeah. You're an opener. Yeah. Now. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I Yeah, I guess I'm probably down that pyramid side bat where I'm told still. So yeah. I've got to move up before I decide where I bat. Mm. But yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, You've, um, it, it seems anyway externally that you've sort of been taken under... The wing of Tim Payne's, obviously, some famous games of uh, FIFA being played, yeah. some, some Twitter battles back in the day when you were on Twitter. I mean, Payne's obviously, he's obviously been criticised pretty heavily after the this test series, but I'd imagine anyway, well, it seems like the team fucking love him. I'd imagine you'd be no different. Yeah, I, I do love him. Yeah, I was trying to think of something smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, to show your love yeah. as an Australian yeah, yeah, male. Yeah. Yeah. He's still shit at FIFA. Yeah. I yeah. was getting, yeah. when, um, when everyone was carrying on, in the media about like pain should be sacked on the back of like calling one bloke a dickhead like mm. as if that's the worst thing in the world. Mm-hmm. I was jumping on the bandwagon and getting stuck into him saying, I agree, mate, you should be sacked <laughs> like the last test. <laughs> Careful but, how that yeah. might be quoted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it did come from a place of love. It was yeah. From yeah, as I said. But um yeah, we'll see how he goes. If he calls someone something mean in South Africa <laughs> might get might get bullied into submission again but no he's an absolute ripper he's been awesome to me um yeah he plays fifa against me which entertains me because i beat him all the time so yeah he tries to claim it's for my confidence like sort of sure. as that he's yeah. sort of top of the pyramid because he's captain yeah. sure i'm bottom of the pyramid so to sort of yeah get that confidence built up yeah you're an academy player kind of thing yeah exactly so um, i gotta earn the right but can i ask just on that he goes, you obviously got an interest in the media and in football uh it was uncovered that you in 2016, been writing a few articles for the Raw about Manchester United. Yeah. Um, so was that the commencement of a budding career in journalism? Uh, I've read the pieces; they're quite they're quite good, and I share your views about Adnan Yanazar. <laughs> um, are you still as into United now as you were then? And if so, what's your assessment? Yeah, so I am still just as into it as I was then. Uh, at the time, I was actually doing a uni degree, and I. Thought I wanted to be a journalist coming out of school. I went to my first class and thought, I do not want to do this. <laughs> so that shows that school's a waste of time. What was um, it? Was it about destroying people's lives that made you uh, want to stop? Yeah, that made me uncomfortable. Mm. Actually, the first thing our teacher or whatever you call it, uni person, what are they called? Lecturer. Tutor. 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 Lecturer, yeah, something like that. She goes, I want you to go find someone like well-known that you know and like just get a bit of information out of them. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Like, I don't want to go and message someone. I was like, hang on a minute, this is what journalism actually is. And I went, yeah, you know what? I'm going to focus on my cricket. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did sort of them as part of uh, doing my journalism thing. And I was, I'm was i a passionate Man United fan. So when I woke up yesterday to notice that we'd been knocked off by a team that had won one game in 19, yeah, I was at quite home. pissed off at home. Yeah. Yeah, but I do love love my mm. soccer. Mm. If I more, could, more interesting than cricket. If I could ask the dynamic of you and Tim Payne, sorry to interject mm. the no. Manchester United um, chat as a Liverpool fan. He's um, also a Manchester United fan. Just so is he? Yep. Is he? Um, now, I, I understand that when you got one of your 200s in the Shield this season, funny sentence, um, that Payne like, drove past you and was just <laughs> like, get a few runs today, did you? Mm. Is that true? That's true, yeah. Yeah, what's so? Uh, what's that dynamic going on there? He's just trying to keep me in the place because he knows exactly how many you've scored. I think he's yeah. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <It's chill>. yeah. <laughs> nah, he just yeah, he's a, he's like I love him, but he's a he's a knob. So <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. apparently that like, like listeners to the show would be aware of this. Like apparently that's what. Ponting used to do to bring people down, like you'd be in the change room, someone yeah. might have hit 40 or 50 yeah. for Tassie, let's say in the mid-90s or something, and he was a young buck coming through. He was like, oh, get a, get a few today, did you? Mm. And obviously Tim Payne's picked up on that. Yeah, it's a He's intoned that. 
He knows exactly how many you've scored. But when he says, get a few, did you? Yeah. He, what he's really saying is like, I'm not quite sure. I heard you might have scored some runs. Can you confirm that for me? Yeah, it's I'm almost really... like I'm focused on the test series. So yeah. Shield Cougar's below me, but yeah. apparently. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, so it's actually quite a detailed. Like people mm. think it's just a throwaway comment, but no. there's actually a lot no. of effort but that comes underneath from underneath that is him recognising in his own way that you have scored runs as well. So he is congratulating you, but... On the top of that is also a bit of a sledge, and he's not really that into it. Very yeah. complicated, man. Yeah, dynamics. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So people think, yeah, it's so simple, but it's yeah. really not. No, you got to read into. I it. just got one more, probably the most important one on my list of questions here. How tall is Cameron Green? Very um, tall. Yeah. I think. Is he thick as well? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like you look at him and you go, if I was an AFL recruiter, I would ball my eyes out that we didn't get him because <laughs> yeah. he's so athletic as well. <laughs> yeah. And I just you just look at him and you're like, oh my god, like you are a specimen. But yeah. more importantly, what's you he like a as a bloke? Because we haven't really heard him speak much. Mm. He's a l- lovely person. Yeah, like very quietly or yeah. softly spoken. A bit too straight though. Might, might be some secrets there, some skeletons. Mm. Skeletons. Ah, uh, <laughs> I think because I'm young, so we obviously got along really well because we we're both like the young bucks, I yeah. guess, in yeah. the team. Yeah. Um, I probably got a bit more out of him, so I know there's probably like a dark side there. Yeah, level, level. Okay, yeah, but yeah, I don't want to be the one to. No. Nah. Yeah. So like Pete, I'm happy to throw under the bus, but yeah. Cam, I just want to let him. Uh, yeah. So when it comes out, he's in like he's within, he's involved in like QAnon or something. Then conspiracy <laughs> theories, that kind of mm. gear, cult stuff, yeah. cult yeah, stuff, I, yeah. I, yeah. I'll let, let, I'm not going to reveal anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For your Cam, own safety. Let Cam come out. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got yeah, it. Pete, Pete's more a stick, whereas Cam's, as I said, 200 centimetres thick. Yeah, yeah, athletic. yeah. yeah. Is, is he, he going to bowl 155 k's an hour when he's able to run into the crease? <laughs> it's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like if I, I try so hard to bowl quick and I, like, oh, we do have the radar gun at yeah. Victoria and like, if I break 100, it's amazing. <laughs> and he like does not try and it's yeah. like 142 and you're like, It's just what? the mass yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. It's just the mass of it. Yeah. yeah. He could honestly, like, he's the type of player, like a sports person, where even in the modern era, he could probably go kick 60 goals for West Coast in the off-season and then come back and average 50 with the bat and 20 mm. with the ball. Yeah, right. He's one of those. Like, like he's yeah. just one of those people. Like, he wouldn't have to train or anything. He'd just roll in and... Yeah. Well, no, we were just talking about him and his rig and stuff and rig worship and, and male dynamics. Like, when he comes into the Australian setup. And there are so many kind of like, you know, Space Jam monster type rigs in the Aussie side, especially with the quicks. Mm. Do they admire him? Like, where does he come into the rig pyramid? Are they like, mate, have a go at you. You are just a, you are. Uh, have enormous. a go at you. Have a go at him. Look at you. Is it like that or is it still, uh, you're young, we're not going to acknowledge you? Mm. I'd like to see what it's like in the one day side where big puppy Stoinis is in town. Because that's it. a proper rig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the fast bowlers are a bit softer like they're yeah. kind of really like welcoming so they yeah. kind of are nice to him and sort of go yeah like you're a big boy you're part of yeah. us yeah but like i reckon like big puppy might yeah. and like, they're both because they're not allowed to bench well. the quicks though are they which is which is important from a rig perspective they don't like like commons and stuff like i went they don't let us bench that yeah. that yeah. hurts from a rig point it would, of view yeah among yeah. equals yeah. yeah so that's unlucky for them as a batter you're allowed to do whatever you want yeah so, um yeah, that's where, I don't know, it'd be an interesting one. Because he's mm. an all-rounder as well. Like, mm. does he fall into, like, a Mitch Marsh, Marcus Stoinis category of, like, mm. comparison? Because they're also big boys as well. So. They're just massive. Western I Australia, f- something in the water over there. Yeah. Mm. I feel like the, the quicks are more, like, you lean, mm. like, you know, we've got a bowl, 25 overs in a test, whereas, yeah. like, as an all-rounder, you can get away with a bit more work in the gym because mm. you're like, yeah, oh, you that's have to right. pull out 8 to 12. Yeah, complicated. Um, yeah, opening bowls more like your sort of runway models, cat yeah, exactly. thin, yeah. lean. Mm. Uh, whereas like the all out is more Instagram fitness models. Mm. Yeah, look it on camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got so many things to consider, Cam Green, doesn't he? He's got a lot. There's to consider, so many yeah. weapons at his disposal. He doesn't Who even is know. he? Who does he? Yeah. yeah. How does he carry it all at once? Yeah. And average fifty and bowl at twenty. Yeah. He just yeah. wants to row at the regatta and work mm. at his dad's law firm. That's right. Stat- Kick that's 60. become irrelevant at some yeah. stage though. Mm. Like it's the presence and stuff that he offers. I'd say. Like yeah. everyone knows he's good now, so it's like. And he's in the gully. It's it's yeah. it triggers yeah. memories of Hayden, Hayden just yeah. being fucking broad. Big yeah. mitts, just fucking taking some catches, swallow throwing them up, swallowing yeah. catches. Yeah, yeah. Stats matter though, you know. I mean, Marnus well, carries on. But does, does he stay in the side if he averages thirty? You know what I mean? Like, it, there's a certain amount of runs you have to score. Um, he's done so enough. Yeah, he's done enough yeah. for five yeah. years. <laughs> Leave that alone. Um, <laughs> we'll. We're going to keep you fast here to see, but we had more important questions to ask you. You've got to go get to breakfast now um, with your with with your mate. You said from the junctions, probably a Vic player or something. But um, so thank you so much for joining us in TGC Towers. Thanks for mm. having me, guys.